It's that special time where we get some real education. Robert Frost was an American poet known for his realistic depictions of rural life and his command of American colloquial speech. Frost was honored frequently during his lifetime and is the only poet to receive four Pulitzer Prizes for poetry. He was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal in 1960 for his poetic works. All right, and Rob Frost is such a familiar old uh, American poet. He, and you know what's so great about him? He, he's really on pretty apolitical. I mean, uh, he wasn't ranting and raving about this nonsense that has nothing to do with art and turning everything into posturing on a progressive level. Just a really solid, decent, intellectual poet. So take a look at the poem in question here. It's called uh, The Rose Family, and it's a complicated little poem with a, with a, with a serious message. And it's, it, it's got a little bit of what you could call politics to it. The rose is a rose, and was always a rose. But the theory now goes that the apples a rose, and the pear is, and so's the plum, I suppose. The deer only knows what will next prove a rose. Yes, you, of course, are a rose, but we're always a rose. So that's got some really interesting stuff in it. Go back again, right? He's talking about the fact that uh, Roses, when you think of roses, you think of rose bushes, you think of a certain kind of flower. But in the family of the rose, that's why it's called the rose family, is also things that aren't roses, like apples, plums, pears. And so Frost the Rose Family is a poem filled with dry humor like this, intertextual awareness and good-hearted fun poked at other poets. The Rose Family is a category of plants that includes flowering trees such as the apple tree, oddly. This poem uses the bo the, this botanical categorization to address the bigger issue of what makes a thing a thing, epistemology, right? What makes a thing a thing? Just because some scientists have decreed that the apple and the pear are part of the Rose Family, does that mean they are roses? And this goes back to some famous statements about roses, right? The first line of the poem refers to a line from Gertrude Stein's poem, Sacred Family. A rose is a rose is a rose. Well, is it? Here, a frustrated Frost exclaims that we should call things by their names and see them for what they are. At least that seems to be what Stein's up to. A rose is a rose is a rose. It doesn't refer to anything else. Metaphors are worthless. The speaker in the rose family challenges this by saying that if you look at th things through the botanical lens, fruits are technically roses too. So where does it end? If apples are roses too, the jump to calling your sweetheart a rose isn't that far away. And you go backwards from Frost to Gertrude Stein all the way to the immortal Shakespeare. Yes, that's right. The classic aspect of this, it was Shakespeare who wrote, right? A rose by any other name would still be a rose, right? So uh, it's kind of a beautiful, witty poem that tries to get at the art, the postmodern and the modern. 1960 is that, that um, turning point between modernism, so to speak, postmodernism. It's about to go one way or another. And we know that in the postmodern post world, uh, you, you are whatever you say you are. If, you want to, if you're a man, all of a sudden you can say you're a woman and no one's allowed to challenge you on that. It goes all the way back to 1960, right? 60 years ago where uh, a very wise old Robert Frost was beginning to to anticipate which way the wind was going to go under postmodernism.